In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The scribes are up to their old tricks again. Jesus is a blasphemer. He's bringing shame upon the name of the Lord. How dare he? So he asked them, what's easier then, to forgive sins or to heal? That's a no-brainer, right? It's easier to forgive sins, of course. I mean, you aren't the son of man. You can't tell a paralyzed man to stand up and walk home. Leave the hard work of healing to God. But what does it really take to forgive sins? What power, what authority lie behind those words, your sins are forgiven? What gives Jesus the authority to forgive? What does he do that makes forgiveness possible? How much is at stake? Jesus has to go before you into death to forgive sins. Jesus has to take all of your sins away from you. He has to go down into the Jordan and soak up all of the sin that has been washed from all of humanity. He has to wrestle that sin into submission and carry it on his back to Golgotha along with his cross and be lifted up on that tree bearing all of it. Jesus takes your place bound to the wood of sacrifice as the knife of death plunges towards him to satisfy the wrath of the Father over sin. And even in dying, he fights for you. With his very last breath, he drags your sin into his grave and leaves it there, never to be seen, never to be heard again. You confess a sin to a fellow Christian and it tumbles into that grave. You confess a sin to your Lord, it slips into that void. You confess a dreadful and a terrifying sin to your pastor and it falls into that pit and out of our Lord's memory forever. Jesus came into this sinful, dying, and broken world to forgive sinners, to restore into a right relationship with the Father those who had gone astray, those who had sought their own way. And in that forgiveness, in that restoration, all of creation is restored, all of creation is healed and made new. But not everything is sunshine and unicorns, is it? You are sometimes frozen in place, paralyzed with fear that if you forgive that one his sin against you, that you will lose something. That by speaking those holy words, in Jesus' name, I forgive you, the one who sinned against you gets away with it, that she escapes the wrath of God. Christ's words of forgiveness are indeed mighty and powerful, both in their being spoken and in their refusal to be spoken. Satan's a real piece of work, isn't he? He's wormed his way in through your sinful ears and he's whispered his lies into your oh-so-receptive brain and your sinful flesh just nods along with the lies. The lie that that one isn't worthy of your forgiveness or even that you aren't worthy of Jesus' forgiveness either, you horrible person. Who are you that God should forgive you, you sinning sinner who sins? 
Christ Jesus speaks healing to the paralytic because he speaks forgiveness. Forgiveness that makes all things new. He has borne your griefs and carried your sorrows with his cross to Golgotha where he is lifted up and where he cries out, it is finished for you. And so the church prays, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And you're reminded that your Lord Jesus has forgiven you you. He has even forgiven your refusal to forgive. He has forgiven every single sin of yours, all of them. Yes, even that one. The water that poured from the pierced side of Jesus washed you clean in your baptism. The blood that flowed down that cross and gushed from that same spear wound sits upon this altar and upon your altar at home, ready to be poured out upon your tongue again and again and again for the forgiveness of your sins. Rejoice, for the Lord has made all things new in Jesus. His forgiveness is gift to you. And you've been blessed with that same forgiveness, that same gift to comfort those around you with the love and with the peace and with the mercy of that same Lord Christ. Be at peace. You are forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen.